In this video, I'm gonna talk about the three misconceptions I oftentimes see when I talk to small business owners who want to start out in analytics and tracking. All and more, coming up. <laughs> Hey there, Measure Geeks, Julian here, back with another video for you. Today, I want to talk with you about some misconceptions I come across when I talk to small business owners who try to get started in tracking and analytics. I often talk to them on the phone through my consulting services, and it is quite interesting that people always want to jump ahead, get more data, get more tracking, although they don't have the right conception of analytics as a whole. And so today I wanna to go through the three misconceptions I come across most often and how to dispel them. Number one, analytics is free. Well, is it really? You just put down a couple of hundred bucks in order to get on the phone with me and let me explain to you how analytics works and what you should get in place. So you already put in resources, also your time into this whole analytics process. Now, while the tool can be free, like Google Analytics, and we all love it, it takes significant amount of resources in order to get the most out of Google Analytics and also get an ROI on your investment. What does that oftentimes mean? Well, if you set up tracking, you will need to get the right data for your business and you will need to get insights out of those data and hopefully get to the change part where you actually change something around in your business in order to get an ROI. This all takes, first of all, planning, it takes implementation time, sometimes from a developer even, and it will take resources from somebody who is knowledgeable about your analytics tool in order to get the right data in, clean data in, and then maintain that data in order for it to be useful also in the future. Then somebody needs to analyze that data and make the most out of it, hopefully gain some real insights that can be put into a presentation and then lobby for the change within the company. So these type of analytics projects take on a quite big scope. And so analytics isn't really free. Yes, the tool might be free, like a Google Analytics, but analytics is so much more. Tracking is so much more than just the tool itself. You will need to invest much more in the future in order to make this process work and make it useful for your company. So analytics is definitely not free. Which brings me to my second point, the tool will not do the work for you. So even if you invest and put in money into an analytics tool, the tool itself will not do the work for you. Yes, it will track and do the technical stuff in the background and hopefully measure the right data for you, give you the capability to measure the right data and also put this into a system that will store that data and make it accessible to those who want to analyze it but it won't be the golden coin when it comes to the actual analytics process because a clickstream tracking tool might be good in tracking, but presenting the data, gaining insights takes much more resources again. So once you have your analytics tool set up, you will still need to do the work. This is also about the small tools that might not cost that much, like a Hotjar or so. Hotjar can only do so much for you. You set it up, it will gather some awesome data for you, but somebody needs to set up and still do the work, still look at that data and say, hey, we should change something about the website because I saw this and that in the data. And this is not something that the tool will do for you. Yes, there are some functionality where you can actually get to actionable analytics with a tool itself but this is then again going into the automation stuff and I would say that oftentimes tools will not replace the person in front of the computer who needs to make sense of this crucial information and then package it so it becomes something actionable that will help your company out. So don't just rely on the tool. If you want to invest into the tool, then you also need to think about what resources do I need around this tool in order to make full use of it. And then the third one, which every web analyst really has come across or everybody who put in tracking onto a website, it's the notion of accuracy. Why don't I get accurate data? 
Well, what does accurate actually mean? So first of all, what we have as tracking tools oftentimes is a JavaScript code on the website itself. It sends data to a tool in the cloud like a Google Analytics. Then Google Analytics takes that data, pipes it through their processing engine, which also applies some rules and meshes data together and wrangles it. So something comes out that you then see in the interface itself. This data is highly processed it has gone through many rule engines already. So there's a special view on that data. And what does accuracy then really mean if you haven't defined really the rules of the game for yourself yet? So you are always looking at something heavily biased. You can interpret it this way or that way. But then also I would say the technology is JavaScript and JavaScript runs client side on the browser of the user. And there's a living organism, which is your website. You are always add features, take away features. The website maybe grows, maybe different traffic sources are coming in. And this JavaScript code needs to react to these different circumstances and sometimes fails. So the technology that we're working with here is not always 100% reliable. In many circumstances, we will need to look at this as a trend analysis rather than a 100% accurate analysis on the data that we have. So oftentimes people ask me, why is my data in my backend different from what Google Analytics is showing? And I would always say to them, Google Analytics is not an accounting tool. It is not your backend. It is a technology that's running on your website. It can give you some useful data, some trends. And we need to be wary of the data being faulty to some what uh, to some a degree, but it's not never going to be 100% accurate. You can get to closer to the 100% through different workarounds through different techniques, but maybe it's not that important for your analysis. Maybe we need to concentrate on what we can get out of the tool right now, rather than just looking at the accuracy standpoint of this tool. So yes, the misconception is really that analytics is accurate. No, it's not. It is actually something that is highly contextual to the website, to your circumstances, and also the data itself needs to be interpreted with these rules in mind that the tool set maybe brings to you. All right, so there you have it. These are the three misconceptions that I oftentimes come across when I talk to clients on the phone and trying to explain to them how they should set up their analytics. We had that analytics is kind of free. No, it's not. The second misconception was that you don't have to do the work once you have the tool installed. No, you always have to do the work. And third, that analytics or these tools that you install are accurate. You rather should look at it from a trend analysis perspective than 100% accuracy. So always take the data that you get in with a grain of salt. Your analytics is not 100% accurate. I hope you agree with these points. If not, I also would love to hear from you in the comments down below or what other misconceptions have you come across over your experience with client work. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, maybe consider subscribing right over there because we bring you new videos just like this one every week. Now, my name is Julian. See you in the next one.